Paul prayed for the church. <laughs> Two of them are in Ephesians and one is in Colossians. But I want to just this, I will look at the one that's in Ephesians 3. It's only a few verses. Um, but it, it's, it's Paul praying for the saints that they have an understanding of, of who they are and what God has done for them. And in uh, Ephesians 3, I should have brought my <laughs> tablet right in my Bible. It keeps blowing. What's blowing up this side? <laughs> in Ephesians chapter 3 uh, and verse 14. <laughs> I don't think this is going to work, is it? Oh, Lord. <laughs> right, let's, let's try again. <laughs> Welcome back, Sally. It's a nice tan you got there. <laughs> oh, uh, it says, For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God you know what was Paul saying what, what was the reason that Paul was was, was, pray, was going on his knees for it was that it tells us in the previous verse that he's asking the saints not to become discouraged, not to lose heart, not to become despondent because they seen Paul in prison, they seen Paul suffering, they seen Paul this, this great man of God who was so fiery and so so filled with the power and the presence of God now in prison and they were, were thinking well what hope is there for us if, 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 if Paul the great man of God is suffering like this what am I what's gonna to happen to, to us and then we're getting discouraged but Paul said I ask you don't lose heart don't be discouraged and t -t today I like to say whatever you're going through whatever you're facing don't be discouraged. Don't allow it to discourage you. Because, it's, because God has put something inside of you that Paul here is telling the brethren that it's something God's put in them and that, they need to have, that they need to trust him and rely on him and take have faith in him that this thing might come to pass. And says, good evening, Pastor John. Another nice turn. <laughs> He's saying... I bow my knees to the, to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Does God have a surname? <laughs> no, he doesn't. So how can we all be named in heaven and earth according to God? You know, in the, in the Bible times, it says that they didn't actually have surnames. They had first names. And if a name was common, then it would it, it, it be... It'd be um, it would it'd be it'd be, it'd be, it'd be specified by saying, for instance, uh, John the son of Zebedee, or saying Simon Bar Jonah, or saying Jesus of Nazareth. But what Paul is saying here is that we are all named by God in heaven and earth as sons of God. We're all His sons. And God takes care of his sons. God loves his sons and takes care of his sons. And we have his name. And as his name, he has given us authority as well. He's given us everything. It says in chapter 1 verse 3 that thanks be unto God. God has given us every blessing in the heavenlies. In Christ. Everything we need is actually already inside of us. And so what we need to do is we need to connect with what it is. We need to know what it is that is inside of us. Who it is that is inside of us. What the source of our strength is. And it says here. That he would grant you. According to the riches of his glory. 
to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man that he would allow us God was Paul was praying that God would would open the eyes of their understanding yeah that, he, that they would come to recognize to understand and to, to know through having their eyes opened what is the riches of his glory riches is talking about an abundant resource an abundant supply it's something okay that is not it's not it's not exhaustible it's it's so that it's a supply that doesn't finish you know we've heard it we've read it the the miracles that jesus has done feeding the five thousand feeding the four thousand we've seen the miracle okay that the elisha, elisha did with the, with the widow when she was elijah with the widow when the oil, oil didn't stop until her capacity to receive had stopped See, God has a, a supply that we, we need to tap into. The riches of his glory. What is his glory? It's his great strength. His great power. So it's not our own power or our own might. It's not our own ability that we need to tap into, that we need to rest on. It's God's inexhaustible power. His great p- might is what we need in our lives today. We need to recognize that it doesn't matter what we are facing, how difficult the situation we face is, we have an inexhaustible supply within us that comes from God. And it goes on to say, through, how does it come? It comes through His Spirit. It comes through His Spirit. And we've all received God's Spirit. I believe we're all here are filled with the Holy Spirit. So that same Spirit is where the source comes from. It's what God uses to supply His strength into our strength. That we want to be strengthened with might in the inner man. You know, when you have a plant, when a plant, if, it, if, the, if the plant stem isn't particularly strong, we would take we would take a pole and we'd reinforce that, that branch with, a, with, a, with that, that pole. We'd tie it to the pole. The pole would, a, a, a pole would allow that branch to continue to stand up strong. Yes? God has given his, us his spirit to enable us to stand up strong against anything. I mean, what did, what, what did Paul say in Romans 8.38? There's absolutely nothing that can separate us. There's nothing that can defeat us. There's nothing that can, that can wield power over us. Because as I previously said, in Christ, we are seated with him. And his strength is available to become our strength. And what Paul says, that when I am weak, then am I strong. He knew this revelation. He knew the source of his strength. He knew that God gave him the ability to do whatever God had called him to do. Wherever he was, he knew God was the one that was applying every grace, every need, every blessing that he needed to do it. And so that's what we need. Paul's praying that the, that the disciples, that the, the, church, the Christians would also have that same revelation that God had implanted into him. He was praying that God would, in another place he said, that the eyes of your light, the eyes of your heart will be flooded with light. You know, in the morning when it's light outside, I've got the curtains and I've got the, the blinds closed. It's still fairly dark. But the moment I open the curtains, the light comes flooding in. And it's light in that room. And I can see clearly. That's what Paul is, is, is saying. The eyes of our understanding being flooded with light. That we would see clearly. That we would know what God has provided for us. What God has placed inside of us. And it says that this supply of the spirit, it comes into our inner man into our spirit his strength comes into our spirit to strengthen us we have that spirit we have the spirit we have the, uh, the power residing within our spirit and you know how do we get this power to extend to, to, to grow to, to grow inside of us to strengthen us 
it's when we spend time in his presence if we don't spend time in his presence what resource we have becomes weaker and less and depleted you know when I was using my phone look at <coughs> sorry, looking at scriptures earlier this, the, my phone started off the day the battery being full but during the course of me sitting down and doing some studying and some reading the power in that battery was becoming depleted and it got to the point where the screen became dark I thought oh what's going on here and I looked at it it's almost depleted so how then do I get my phone to come back to power I don't just put it down and hope that it will, it will, it will, it will grow stronger I don't put it in my pocket and hoping oh it will charge in my pocket I've got to connect it to an inexhaustible power supply it has to be plugged into power if it's not plugged into power it continues to decrease in power and goes out becomes dead we call it dead we need to remain plugged into God's presence that our, pa our power which we receive from God we come full he has an abundant reservoir of power inexhaustible but it's no good to us if we're not plugged into it when Adam became separated from God when he was taken out of the garden he could no longer become connected to God in the call of the day and he became weak spiritually Moses he, he, he gradually he, 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 he had received from God he had lost it But you know, God has, given, God has restored us to that place where we can walk in continued power. He's given us His Spirit. His Spirit in us and us communing in the Spirit empowers and strengthens us. It gives us that strength, that power, that grace that we need to do what we need to do. And says that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith the anointed one the anointing dwells in our heart by faith the anointed one Jesus who was, was anointed with the Holy Ghost and went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil he did that because he was connected to the Father. He had a spirit of God residing within him. And he, he tapped into that regularly. And so when he went about during the course of the day, he was able to give out of that power. I don't know if you've ever touched something that's alive. I know I have, and I know at least one person has done that. <laughs> <laughs> but if you were to touch something that was alive <laughs> I will say you become very animated very quickly <laughs> in my childhood I was very inquisitive <laughs> and I would do things to, to try and find out how it worked and much to my mum's frustration after I played with my toys for a while I would take them apart to see how they work <laughs> there was a time when I was coming from the shop and I was passing uh, what you call a, a, a lamppost and the actual cover was off it and I thought ooh ooh <laughs> being a naughty child that I was and the inquisitive child that I was <laughs> I grabbed on the wires and pulled it and as I pulled it in my hand it made me jump <laughs> when we connect to God there's a power that 
animates us, renews life, brings back alive, encourages, strengthens, builds up, renews vigor, and causes us not to be discouraged but to be encouraged, causes us to have hope, causes us to have vision, causes us to have love. All the attributes of God, when we connect to him, become connected to us. And the more we connect to God, the more his attributes are inside of us. And it says, through faith in your hearts, through faith. Dwell in your hearts through faith. That you being rooted and grounded in love. When you look at the word rooted where, 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 do, where, do, where do roots come from you avid gardeners I'm sure you can tell me where roots come from under the ground but I mean, let me rephrase it then out of what do roots come seed Bible tells us, okay, that God's seed is in us. A seed in your hand will not grow. A seed, as long as it's in the packet, won't grow. A seed can be in that packet for a hundred years, two hundred years. It won't grow. But it, it, just, it looks lifeless, it looks dormant, it, 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 it doesn't look like anything really, just a seed. But the moment that seed is connected to its life force, it begins to grow. And the first thing it does, it doesn't bud a flower, it doesn't come up, it goes down. It sends roots down into the earth. The deeper the roots grow, the more life it can sustain above ground. And it says here, that God wants us to know what is the width, the length, the depth, the height. God's love has to be rooted in our hearts firmly before the manifestation of that love, of that love can grow up. And it says, being enlightened, dwelling, God, Christ dwelling in our hearts by faith, being rooted and grounded, once God's love, God's presence is grounded, is, is rooted inside of us. It's stable, it's strong, it's firm. And the deeper it goes, the more adversity it, it can take above ground. If we want to be able to take adversity, which we do need to be able to take adversity, because the Bible says everyone who lives godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. We've not been promised a bed of ease and a bed of roses. But he has promised to always be with us. And he's given us everything we need to survive. Everything we need not to survive, but to flourish. And he says in the Old Testament that those who are <laughs> planted in a house of the Lord shall flourish. We need to allow God's love and grace to be rooted inside of us so that it can grow and expand and it also says we will never be able to fully comprehend because the word comprehend talks about a process of understanding a process of maturing a process of growing so the more we grow in god in his love and his grace the more there is to grow we never fully mature in god but we, we reach a state of maturity, but we don't stop there because it is more to grow. A, a great oak becomes a great tree, 
before it even reaches its pinnacle, its peak, its stages. Oh, it's 7.30. Okay. Uh, let me just... To know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. Knowledge is what we learn or we understand with our intellect, with our mind, with our understanding. But the Bible says that the love of Christ, it passes it goes beyond our understanding. It's not like man's love, which is finicky and which is, which is one moment I love you, next minute I hate you. I, I, oh, I like this person. No, I don't like this person. No. God's love, okay, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is stable. He is not moved. And the other word that Paul used, often rooted, was grounded. And when you look at grounded, there's an old song, which I like these old songs. If it wasn't charged, I couldn't serve you. <laughs> it says, let me read this song before we finish. Will your anchor hold in the storms of life? When the clouds unfold their wings of strife, when the strong tides lift and the cables strain, will your anchor hold? Will your anchor hold? Will your anchor drift or firm remain? It says that we have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll. Fastened to the rock. Hallelujah. Who is the rock? <laughs> so what is your anchor? Your rock is Jesus, and your anchor is a cure to the rock. So what is your rock? What is your anchor? Your faith. It says, fasten to the rock, which cannot move. Grounded. There's that word. Grounded. Firm and deep in the Savior's love. Held secure by faith in the Savior's hands. Shielded by his grace, on Christ we stand. He is Lord of all. We should never doubt. Though in certain times, he is solid ground. And the third verse says, You have carried us through the raging sea, in the fire and flood. We stand redeemed. Through the storms of life, you will not let go. Grounded, firm, and deep in a Savior's love. That our confidence, that our anchor holds. So, I just want to encourage you. <laughs> Look at this passage of Scripture. <laughs> Be encouraged. Your God is inexhaustible. Your God cannot run out of anything. He is the Almighty. He is the one who created everything. And He is the one who can do all things. And because He can do all things, and because His Spirit is in us, we can do whatever He has called us to do. Whatever we face, we walk in victory. That's Paul said, he daily leads us in triumph. When we are anchored to him, when we are plugged in to him, he leads us. And we cannot be defeated. God bless you. This is Ali.